police arrest and prosecute man for making fun of them on Facebook sounds like something of a parody headline, but that is a pretty fair description of a real parody case that may reach the Supreme Court with the assistance of a parody website. That's the newly filed amicus brief from The Onion in support of an appeal brought from the Ohio man in exactly that situation, Anthony Novak of Parma, Ohio, a Cleveland suburb. And sure, I think it's fair to say that The Onion's sharpest writing is well behind them at this point. A browse of their current material shows they're spending more time fighting the powers that were than the powers that be. They're still mocking QAnon as though that's somehow currently relevant. While apparently the funniest thing about Biden is that he hasn't done enough taxing and spending to fix the weather. In other words, the headline could be, if only man in power exercised power more powerfully, we'd all be better off. That's not a partisan criticism, that's just a principle of satire criticism. If you're in the business of holding power to account, as the Onion itself insists that it is, then hold power to account instead of giving the power that you like a free pass. And I know that the Onion can do that, because I've seen them take on bullies before. In fact, it's my favorite headline that The Onion ever published. High school bully worried victims will realize he is actually a retarded f himself. They used to have edge. They used to take risks. Most importantly, they used to be willing to offend. And now it's just a slightly more sarcastic CNN in print. Or in fairness to The Onion, maybe it's just that reality itself got far more ridiculous than they could ever compete with. But whatever happened, the point of the story is not The Onion's parody appeal or not. The point of the story is the unusual moment of a parody website writing a parody brief for a real potential Supreme Court case. And at least on this write-up, The Onion still did a pretty good job. They made fun of themselves as high-level advisors to the world's worst hellholes. They made fun of the police in this case, or at least their logic, that their argument assumes that everyone is actually less sophisticated and more humorless than they are. And they made fun of the Supreme Court itself, trying to impress the justices with a long list of Latin phrases to demonstrate that they too speak elite legalese. Much more importantly though, the brief lays out a concise and compelling defense of parody as protected speech. Now, of course, The Onion has a business interest in that standard, as they acknowledge, but they do a good job of identifying and arguing the principles at stake. For parody to function, people must at least momentarily be tricked into thinking it's real. And because people think it's real, parody has a unique capacity to critique reality. A reasonable reader doesn't need a disclaimer to understand that parody is indeed parody, and it should be an obvious matter of First Amendment protection that a parodist cannot be prosecuted for telling a joke with a straight face. Most importantly, the brief argues with reference to a prior decision, if the First Amendment forbids anything, it's a law that lets public figures keep people from mocking them, or a law that lets government actors keep people from mocking them, as is the case in this story that threatens all of those principles. It is a little more complicated than that, but only slightly so. In 2016, Anthony Novak, a then 27-year-old in Parma, Ohio, created a parody account of the city's police department page and made joke posts like the department was hosting a pedophile reform event through which offenders could complete a day's no means no workshop and earn their way off the sex offender registry and, as an added bonus, be given honorary police officer jobs. He posted that police were offering free abortions to pregnant teens, just stop by their sketchy van outside of the grocery store and try their new experimental method. He posted a notice that everyone was banned from giving any homeless people food, money, or other assistance in an effort to starve them out of town. Now, if the content of these posts wasn't absurd enough to tip off the average viewer that it's a joke, there were several other context clues as well. The account was published under community pages, not the official designation for government agencies, and the police department's motto was changed from We Know Crime, K-N-O-W, to We Know Crime, N-O. Now, in fairness, Novak's parody account did look exactly like the real police department account. It had the same profile image, it had the same header image. So at first I thought this became a legal issue because of some impersonation reason. The same reason you can't just throw on a uniform and pretend to be a cop on the street. That's not actually the legal issue though. Instead, 
police and prosecutors went after Novak for supposedly obstructing police resources. Ohio had a broad state law that criminalized using a computer to disrupt, interrupt, and impair police services. The police department made the argument that the 10 calls they received to clarify if the account was real or fake was such a disruption in violation of that law. So Novak was charged with a felony. He was arrested. Police seized his electronic devices. He spent four days in jail before he posted $7,500 bond. Later in August of 2016, he was put on trial and acquitted because the jury was not convinced that Novak's stunt and the 10 or so calls to the police department that it generated sufficiently obstructed ordinary police duties to convict him. And that acquittal was the end of the criminal prosecution, but where the case continues is in Novak's civil lawsuit against the police department in response. Not only were his First and Fourth Amendment rights violated at great cost of time and money for Novak, but he also argues that the police were needlessly vengeful going out of their way to punish him just for making fun of them, not because their jobs were actually obstructed by his antics. And to Novak's point, the parody account's impact and lifespan were minimal. The account was up for only 12 hours. It made only six posts total. It had only 100 or so followers, and Novak himself took the page down when police made an issue of it. If this was just about ending the confusion and the supposed obstruction, well, Novak did that. He stopped. Police could have just dropped the issue there and moved on, but they didn't, Novak believes, because this was all just a pretext for what was instead a malicious prosecution in pursuit of vengeance. They just didn't like that he made fun of them, and so they went after him, trashing the First Amendment and any sense of proportionality and resolution. They didn't just want him stopped. They wanted him ruined, Novak says, and so his lawsuit for damages is what is actually at issue now. The protection police are claiming in this lawsuit you'll often hear referred to as qualified immunity, which shields police from liability for violating constitutional rights unless the alleged misconduct ran afoul of clearly established law. Ohio state law affords police such protection. But Parody does have clearly established First Amendment protection by Supreme Court case law, you might think. It does, but this is where the case gets more messy and complicated, at least as far as the lower courts are concerned. The case was most recently appealed through the Federal Sixth Circuit, and the judge writing for the panel in that case said it wasn't the parody content of the posts that was actually the issue. Rather, it was two separate actions. While the page was live, Novak apparently deleted comments from other users outing the page as fake, thinking that their comments would ruin the joke. Novak also reposted the police department's warning about his parody account, which he thought would make the joke funnier. Which seems contradictory. Novak didn't want to be outed, so he deleted comments outing him. But he also thought that the police department outing him was hilarious, so he reposted it. Either he was trying to hide the truth or he wasn't, but somehow he's being accused of both simultaneously. That may sound trivial, and I think it is. But the reason that the appeals court thinks that it's legally significant is because neither of these things have clearly established First Amendment case law. The Sixth Circuit appeals judge said that for Novak to defeat the police department's qualified immunity protection, he has to demonstrate that his speech or actions were clearly protected by an established First Amendment standard. Because no such standard exists to protect deleting Facebook comments and reposting the official warning from the police department, the judge said that police were reasonable in establishing probable cause on the basis of those actions and qualified immunity protects the police from lawsuit liability. It's logic I find bizarre for several reasons. First, police didn't arrest and charge Novak for what he deleted. They arrested and charged him for what he posted. And there is clearly established First Amendment case law protecting that parody content. Second, how amplifying a government message is not necessarily protected speech is baffling. Such a standard would mean that we could be prosecuted for saying exactly what the government says. And again, I understand that there are lines of impersonation to consider, but Novak was not prosecuted for impersonation. He was prosecuted for obstruction, as though simply repeating the government speech back to them is somehow an obstruction of their jobs. The reason there is no clearly established case law on that concept is because it's simply too silly to prosecute. And third, that's why I think this standard that the citizen must show First Amendment protection is backward. 
all speech is presumed to have First Amendment protection unless the state can demonstrate some sort of established exception. That is the entire history of the case law. It is not the Supreme Court giving us protected forms of speech. It is the court carving out only narrow exceptions to what is otherwise presumed to be protected speech in the first place. Accordingly, Novak speech should be presumed protected unless proven otherwise, not presumed illegal unless proven protected. And I understand that this context is somewhat unique, considering that Novak is the plaintiff in this lawsuit now, not the defendant, meaning that the burden of proof is with him now, not the state. It's the nature of the qualified immunity law that does that. So perhaps my issue is less with the courts in this case and more with the concept of qualified immunity itself, which is properly fixed through the legislature, not the courts. But whatever the solution through this framework, we are drifting away from the First Amendment's core principle, not upholding it. And while the edges of that principle are often debated, how specific does a threat have to be? Or how false does a defamatory lie have to be? Or how obscene does offensive material have to be to be outside the First Amendment's protection? This one is not an edge case. If the First Amendment has a philosophical heart, this is it. Do you have the right to criticize the government or not? And if you do it too convincingly or too offensively, should you lose that right? For all the problems that police impersonation may carry, the danger of overly restricting that mockery is the slipperiest slope it's best not to even try to traverse, since all authoritarianism is built upon the prohibition of criticizing it. Too much government mockery means a delegitimized state. But too little government mockery means a delegitimized people. That is the principle on which the parody is turning deadly serious, and Novak and the Onion are asking the Supreme Court to take the case. So far, there are no clues that I've seen on whether they will or they won't. If they don't, then Novak's lawsuit against the police department is done, and of course he can't be prosecuted again, so this case would just end in a draw with Novak out of his time and money and absolutely no accountability at all for a police department that disregarded the First Amendment and put a guy in jail for a speech crime anyway. On that principle, not just the integrity of the First Amendment, but accountability for government actors who trash it, I hope the court takes this one up, and I hope that The Onion regains the courage to call them retarded f if they don't. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Minds. That is at M. L. Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.